Hi everyone and welcome to this presentation where I'm going to talk about the K-Server conjecture. And this is joint work with Elias Kutsupias. And without further ado, let's get right to it. So in the K-Server problem, we are given a metric space, which I will denote by M and the distance function by D. And there are K-Servers located in this metric space. And so in this example, the servers are these fire engines. And now at any discrete point in time, we receive a request at some point RT of the metric space. And then we have to select one of our servers to move to the request. And after we've done this, we receive the next request. And again, we have to select one of the servers to move to the request and so on. And the goal in this problem is to minimize the cost, which is defined as the total distance traveled by all the servers. And as usual in online algorithms, we say that an algorithm is row competitive if the cost of the algorithm on any instance is at most row times the optimal cost on this instance, plus perhaps some additive constant. And the optimal cost here, but this would really mean the best offline, so the best in hindsight cost, whereas our algorithm is online, so it has to decide which server to use for the current request without knowing the future requests. And that's why, in general, we cannot achieve row equal to one here. And in fact, when this problem was introduced in 88, it was already shown that the competitive ratio is at least k for deterministic algorithms on any metric space that has more than k points. And the case of a conjecture, which was also formulated back then already, states that there exists a deterministic algorithm for which this lower bound is tight. So the case of our conjecture is that there exists a k-competitive deterministic algorithm for this problem. And this problem is still open today. And we will not solve it today. But uh, what we do is we make some progress towards it. So let me first tell you what is known about the case of our problem in terms of the best bounds today. So on any metric space, it's known that there is a 2k minus 1 competitive algorithm. And moreover, the tight bound of k is known for many special cases, uh, which are listed here. And um, there's also the, the very interesting field of randomized algorithms for the case server problem. So in, here it's um, possible to get even polylogarithmic competitive ratios. So there have been several papers in the recent years uh, achieving these breakthroughs which is also very interesting, but in terms of techniques, it's very different from uh, what is being done for the deterministic case server problem. The algorithm which achieves most of those bounds on the previous slide, and which is in fact the algorithm that's conjectured to solve the case server conjecture, is the work function algorithm. So it is conjectured that this algorithm is in fact k-competitive on any metric space. And this algorithm is defined as follows. So first I have to say what a work function is. So work function is a function defined on configurations. So configuration is simply a set of K points of the metric space. And we can think of these K points as uh, possible locations of the K servers. So for a configuration C, we define WT of C to be the minimal cost to serve the first T requests of the request sequence and then reach configuration C. So this is called the work function because WT of C is the amount of work that has to be done in order to be in configuration C at time T. And the work function algorithm is defined as follows. At any time T, when we receive the request RT, we go to the configuration CT, which minimizes the sum of the distance from the previous configuration plus the work function value of this new configuration. So notice that if in this argmin we would have only the distance from the previous configuration and we didn't have the second term, then this would just be the greedy algorithm, which just tries to minimize the cost in the current time step, which is an algorithm of infinite competitive ratio, so infinitely bad. And also if instead we didn't have the distance here, but only the work function, then this would be the algorithm that always chases the configuration of the current optimal algorithm if the request sequence would stop right now. And also this algorithm has infinite competitive ratio. But interestingly, combining these two and taking the um, 
the configuration that minimizes the sum of these two quantities leads to an algorithm that is known to be competitive and in fact conjectured to be the best algorithm for this problem. Another view on this algorithm is also that we always go to the configuration C that would be optimal if the future request sequence would be the mirror image of the past request sequence. So the way to see that this is actually what the algorithm is doing is to consider that, okay, I defined WT of C as the minimal cost to serve the first tier requests and reach configuration C, but note that this is equivalent to the minimal cost of starting in configuration C and then going backwards, serving all these requests backwards in time and ending in the initial configuration. So therefore this sum of the distance from CT minus one to C plus the work function of C is the same as the cost of going from CT minus one to C and then going backwards, ser serving all the requests backwards. And our configuration as stated here by the algorithm description is the one that would be optimal for this scenario. So from this, you can see that the work function algorithm is a very general algorithm applicable to many problems, not just the case server problem. And that's why it's uh, important that we understand this algorithm because it will also yield insights beyond the case server problem. So here are some problems where the work function algorithm is relevant. So for instance, for MTS, it is known that the work function algorithm achieves the optimal competitive ratio on any metric space. Um, and also there's something called the generalized work function algorithm, which is almost the same algorithm, except that we have some weighting factor lambda here for, um, for one of the two terms. And this algorithm has been successful for the weighted case server problem in some special cases, at least for the generalized two server problem. And also for the layered graph traversal, this is the algorithm that achieves the best known deterministic competitive ratio. And also beyond this work function has, work functions have been crucial in recent breakthroughs for the convex body chasing problem and convex function chasing. So the relevance really goes far beyond the case of our problem. But despite this, we still don't really understand the work function algorithm and work functions more generally. So there are still significant gaps in the understanding. For instance, these results only work for special cases. And um, well, of course, for the case server problem, we also don't know yet whether it has the optimal competitive ratio of K, but here's what we do know about the case server problem. So we do know that the work function algorithm achieves this upper bound of 2K minus one on any metric space. So we are within this factor two of the lower bound and it achieves the bound of K for many special cases. So this list, if you, you might notice, is almost the same list that we've seen a few slides ago when I talked about general upper bounds for the case server problem. So almost all of those upper bounds were in fact achieved by the work function algorithm. The only exception is that on tree metrics, it is known that there exists a K competitive algorithm, but it is not known whether the work function algorithm also achieves this on trees. Instead, this is known for two special cases of trees, namely the line metric and weighted star metrics. And yeah, as you can see here, there are several other special cases. So case two, uh, K plus one point spaces, K plus two point spaces, or when K is three on the Manhattan plane. And our contribution uh, today is that we give a unifying proof on all these cases. So we give a single potential function that reproves uh, these results where the competitive ratio of k is known. And additionally, we also use this potential function to show the same result for some additional cases. And moreover, we reject structural conjectures from the early 90s. And by re rejecting these conjectures, we give new um, insights in the problem explaining why the general case and even the case of the circle metric is different and more difficult than all these cases where the um, case server conjecture has been resolved. So before I get to our results, let me first give you the basic out outline of the known proofs uh, that have been there before us. So all proofs basically rely on this lemma and in fact also our proofs rely on this. 
So this is a really powerful lemma because it states that if this inequality is satisfied, then the work function algorithm is K-competitive. And the reason why this is powerful is that the premise of this lemma, this inequality, this is a statement involving only the work functions. It doesn't involve the configuration of the work function algorithm anymore. And we also don't need to keep track of the configuration of the off offline algorithm. This really just is a statement about work functions that needs to be verified. And if that's true, then the work function algorithm is K-competitive. And let me briefly sketch the idea of proving this lemma. So it's actually relatively simple. So the left-hand side of this inequality, this can be lower bounded by the cost of the work function algorithm plus the optimal cost. So that's why this uh, sum is also called the extended cost. In fact, we would have equality here. So this would be equal to the cost of the work function algorithm plus the optimal cost. If instead of taking the maximum of our configuration C, we would take the configuration of the work function algorithm in the last time step. And moreover, this minimum of our work functions at the final time step, this is equal to opt. And the reason this is equal to opt is relatively easy to see if you recall the definition of the work function. Wt of C is by definition the minimal cost to serve all the requests up to the last time step t, and then end up in configuration C. So if we take the minimum over all configurations C, then this is precisely the optimal cost. And um, yeah, so this is easy to see. And the other equation follows relatively easily from the definition of the work function algorithm. So let's take this lemma for granted now. And because of this lemma, it now suffices to show that there exists some potential function phi with the following two properties. On the one hand, we want that any term in this sum can be upper bounded by the change of the potential from one time step to the next. And moreover, we want that the potential function of some work function W is the sum of K plus one work function values plus some constant. So if we have these two properties for some potential phi, then I claim that the premise of this lemma follows because of the left-hand side of the premise using the first property can now be upper bounded by the sum of these potential changes, which is a telescoping sum. So that's just the, the final potential minus the initial potential. And this I claim because of the second property can be upper bounded by the right-hand side of this premise in the lemma. The reason is that well, the potential of the initial configuration, that's just a constant. So that just is, is eaten up by this constant here. And the potential of the final configuration by this second property is the sum of k plus one work function values plus a constant. And these k plus one work function values are all within an additive constant of the minimal work function value at the end, at least as long as the metric space is bounded, this would be true. And uh, even in unbounded cases, uh, there's usually some way to make this work. So that's why this is then also less than the right-hand side of, uh, of this inequality. And it would then follow that the work function algorithm is K-competitive. So we just need a potential that satisfies these two properties. And previous proofs gave a different potential for every single special case where it is known that the work function algorithms can competitive. So here's a list of uh, like a, a summary of all these potential functions for all these cases. And uh, well, what you can see is like, I, I don't want you to read all these potentials now. It's just to give an impression that the situation so far has been uh, kind of a mess. Like also there's no clear intuition for all these, well, at least for many of these potential functions, there's no clear intuition. And if we want to solve the case of our conjecture on general metric spaces, then um, yeah, how, how can we possibly, um, yeah, we, we would need some generalization of these potential functions, it would seem. And uh, this is the contribution or one of the contributions of our paper. We give a single potential function which works in all of these cases and which also has an interpretation, which I will come to later. 
So our potential is defined as follows. We take the minimum over k points of the metric space and then the sum of these work function values, where this, this is supposed to denote the configuration that contains i copies of xi bar and xi plus one to xk. And by xi bar, I mean the antipode of xi. So the antipode, well, if the metric space was a circle, then it's relatively clear what the antipode is. It's just the point opposite of x. But this is a notion that extends, in fact, to any metric space in the sense that every metric space can be extended in a way such that antipodes then exist in, for every point in this extended space. So this definition makes sense for every metric space. Whether it proves the k server conjecture is, is a different question that I will come to later. Well, it does not, but um, let's, let's get to that. So first of all, the, this potential can be used and we do this to, to reprove the k competitiveness of work function for all the known special cases, all these six cases that are listed on the previous slide. And moreover, using this potential, you can also get new results for the work function algorithm. Namely, we show that the work function algorithm is k-competitive on multi-ray spaces. So multi-ray spaces are spaces where, well, we have several rays all starting at the same origin, and then we can have requests anywhere on these rays. So note that if there are just two rays, then a two-ray space is just the line. And if there are many rays, but there's just one point on each ray that can be requested, then we would get a weighted star. So this is a generalization of the line and uh, weighted stars. And in particular, it's a kind of tree metric. Um, and for arbitrary tree metrics, we show that if there are three servers, then we are three competitive. Like then the work function algorithm is three competitive. So let me also give you the recipe for using our potential. So this is a slide more relevant to the experts. So we show that it suffices to show that this minimum in this definition of the potential is achieved when the last point of this sequence x1 to xk, when that is the last request that we've seen. So if this is true for all work functions on some metric space, then the work function algorithm is k-competitive on this metric space. And yeah, we show in fact that this premise of the lemma is satisfied for all the aforementioned cases. And showing this is um, well particularly complicated actually on multi-ray spaces. Here we use the quasi-convexity property of work functions in new ways. So quasi-convexity is a property that's very fundamental to to, to many proofs of the work function algorithm, but usually it's used in a simplified form and we use it in the more uh, general and strongest form in order to obtain this result. And our proof for three servers on trees uses the characterization of tree metrics, namely that a metric space is a tree if and only if minus the distance function is quasi-convex when viewed as a, a set valued function. So we're a bit puzzled by the, the relevance of quasi-convexity of the metric here and whether it has any deeper connection to the quasi-convexity of work functions. Um, and in fact, we are, we are not sure and we don't quite understand whether, yeah, th whether this is a crucial property and well, of course there are metric spaces that are not, uh, where the distance function is not uh, quasi-concave, where we still know that the work function is k-competitive but th maybe this is just due to the fact that in the relevant steps of the proof, there are only three or less points of the metric space involved and any three point metric space is also quasi-concave. So um, yeah, th this would be an interesting question to answer what the role of this uh, quasi-convexity of minus D really is. Um, okay, as promised, there is also an interpretation of our potential function. So namely, it captures a certain type of lazy adversary. So to explain what this is, um, fix k points in the metric space, x1 up to xk. And then we keep requesting some 
of the well one of these three points well k points in general as long as this changes the work function and we always request the xi with i maximal such that it changes the work function so say we request this x3 and then well, this has an effect on the work function it changes and then we keep requesting and we do this until um, well eventually placing more requests at these points wouldn't change the work function anymore and uh, then we stop and our potential fee captures sequences that are concatenations of such sequences so after we've done this once we would then choose a new set of three points well, which might or might not overlap with the previous set of three points and again we do the same so we keep requesting these points until all the servers are converging to those points and in fact when k is at most three then we can also drop this requirement that i has to be chosen maximum so then it captures a more general uh, lazy adversary and it was conjectured in 92 by Krobach and Lama that the potential that would capture such request sequences would in fact prove the case of our conjecture. So in other words, they conjectured that the potential that we now made explicit would prove the case of our conjecture. And back in 92, they also tested their conjecture on tens of thousands of small metric spaces and they found no counterexample. And we also ran the test now using our explicit expression for the potential. So what we did is we computed the complete work function graph of the three server problem on the endpoint circle metric for some fixed n. And then for every edge of this work function graph, so for every transition between two work functions, uh, we checked whether this condition that's, that would imply k competitiveness, whether that is satisfied by our potential. And uh, again, we didn't find any counterexample. Um, so notice that there are only, well, in, in principle, there are infinitely many work functions, but uh, if, you, if you put them into equivalence classes, so two work functions are equivalent if they differ by an additive constant, um, then there are only finitely many work functions. So this is actually a finite graph for any finite metric space. So at this point, we were, when we didn't find a counterexample, we were quite confident that this potential will likely prove the case of our conjecture until we had some other idea to, to change our computations a little bit. So the idea is that instead of doing K server requests on the circle, we could also do K taxi requests on the circle. So a taxi request is a request involving not one, but two points. And to serve such a request, we have to select one of the servers to first go to the first point of the request, and then the same server has to go to the second point of the request. So a taxi request is relevant here because it can actually be simulated by a sequence of server requests on the continuous circle, and therefore the work functions reachable with taxi requests are also reachable with server requests. So to simulate such a request with server requests, we would first place a normal K server request at the start here. And then as soon as uh, yeah, the server is here, we would place many requests along this line. And as these uh, requests get arbitrarily close to each other, this essentially forces the, the algorithm to, to use the same server to serve all of these requests. So the benefit of using these taxi requests is that we can reach more work functions in this work function graph, but these work functions are still supported on only endpoints. So by supported, I mean that the work function can be described by only the values and configurations uh, involving endpoints, where n is relatively small. And for this setup now with taxi requests, when n is eight, the complete work function graph has 280,752 reachable work functions up to symmetry of the circle and additive shifts. 
And among those 280,752 work functions, there was exactly one counterexample to our potential function. So this shows that our potential function doesn't work in general. And because of the conjecture, well, because of the interpretation of, of our potential as the one that captures the lazy adversary, this shows that the conjecture of Krobach and Lama for, from the early 90s is not true for three servers on the circle metric. And uh, yeah, so in other words, there is a reachable work function on the circle where the worst case continuation is not such a lazy adversary continuation. So this is really separating the circle metric from all the metric spaces where we know that the work function algorithm is K competitive. And therefore it's highlighting the circle as an important testing ground for, for new um, analysis techniques. So with that, I'm coming to the end of the presentation and the open problems. So of course, does the case server conjecture hold? That's the main question. But there are very interesting special cases of this question now. So are three servers three competitive on the circle? If yes, then this, or well, of course, if no, then would also be, uh, well, it would disprove the case server conjecture. Um, but this would be the first uh, resolved special case uh, of the case server conjecture where the, the worst case adversary is not lazy. So because of that, this is an extremely interesting case. And also, of course, it looks extremely simple, but apparently it's not so simple. And we're also very interested in whether the work function algorithm is K competitive on trees. So we provided this proof for the case that K is three on trees. We don't know whether we can use our potential function for greater K on trees. And uh, as I mentioned before, there is this quasi convexity property of minus the tree metric, which seems to be relevant and which may point towards directions of changing our potential function perhaps uh, for general metric spaces in order to prove the case of our conjecture in general. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye. <laughs>